mitzvahs and the everything right, but they are not connected to Hashem. And I gave a marshal brought about Hashem she's married many, many years and her uh, grandchild is quite old already, but when she started dating and I was to say it was before the hot email she started dating with the facts but she I changed the story with email. So she was nineteen I asked her what type of a chasm do you want? And I said to her, there are two types of, uh, of chasm. One is, he, you know, you ask him the chasm, Kalab emailed the chasm a list of ten things. Ten things she emailed him. And this chasm does everything immediately. Crosses every T, dots every I, it's efficient, it's done, it's extremely well done. But this husband is very removed, very cold, doesn't IMS her or estims her, you know, heart sending, you know, flirtatious, nothing, very removed, and you know, whatever, yes, yeah, I'll do. Nothing but extremely, but make sure she needs something, it's done immediately. Then you have another husband, Kali emails him a list of ten things. Somehow, two of them got deleted. Somehow, turned out to be eight. This computer ain't only showed up. I don't know why. But that's what happened. <laughs> and she says to him, he tells her, you know, of the eight, two I cannot take care of. So I don't know how to do it. The other six, you wait two weeks, I'll have it done. Two weeks go by, it's still not done. And it's like I go shopping for my wife. It's the wrong pasta and it's the wrong ketchup. You know? uh, it's like when the daughters go with me, I get the wrong item. This is what happened. But he was always good morning. Good evening, send the flowers, send her warmth. You know, when a girl is 19, she wants the flowers and, you know, but we as a mature know a relationship needs two things in your relationship. You need to be, do the right thing, and you gotta be warm. Imagine a guy's gonna take out his guitar <coughs> all day, sing poetry to his wife and sing on the couch. She's gonna take the pot and bang him over the head and go get a job. <laughs> And, you know, all day playing music. It doesn't work that way. The person needs to do the right thing, has to be responsible, and a person needs to have the warmth and the affection. What the Rav Nachman induced into us is not, you know, Baruch Hashem, people keep the mitzvahs, and that's also challenging to do the mitzvahs. We have a big guitar. But what he really, really induced is the warmth to be connected to Hashem. We are, unfortunately, very disconnected from Hashem. I mean, that's why he emphasized the greatness of talking to Hashem every day. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I always tell, uh, tell the people it's very easy to call yourself a breast of a chassid, a babach a chassid. The test is, do you meditate every day? Because that, when your person talks to Hashem every day, you literally make Hashem a reality. It's, it's a real thing. It's not like, you know, out there you feel it. This is what one of the main goals for the Nachman tribe that we should feel. I always tell people when you talk about loving Hashem, it's either in my shul, I have a from for bird shul, and I say when I talk about loving Hashem, either I sound like a Balshuva, a flaky, or both. Recently someone told me you sound like Shlomo Kalbach. You know, <laughs> lo- talking about loving Hashem is so removed, it's such a and the, the greatest mitzvah in the Torah is, is, is loving Hashem. In Shmai, so we say, we have the Mezuzah, and it's so because we are so removed from Hashem. So one of the great importance that Nachman wanted, we should not just be, you know, we should be connected. The warmth, it's like the chasm to the color. The chasm to the color is not just you have to do the thing, but it has to be warm. It's got to be, you know, to be nice. It's an, Passionate, that's what, you know, we get up in the morning, we don't even know why we get up. The person, you know, when he, he makes a shabby reality in his mind, it becomes a real thing. It becomes, you know, and I love Hashem, and that's one of the great things that he said. There's a lot to talk about, but I want to just say three great things I'm not going to try to introduce. Second thing, which everyone knows, is happiness. I always tell people that. No one ever went to a therapist and 
who told the therapist, I don't know how to be angry, I don't know how to catch, I don't know how to criticize, <laughs> I don't know how to cry. We all know uh, how to cry, criticize, catch. And I, I tell people that Hallmark does not sell cars of criticism. Do you know that? that? I once challenged one of my daughters, she didn't believe me, she went to a Hallmark store in the valley, a store with a huge store, and they couldn't find the criticism. The one he said, all right, you know why Omar? I'll tell you it's simple. When it comes to criticism, we want to do it now. You know, when you want to thank you, why to thank someone, I'll wait next time I go shopping, I'll find their card. When you want to criticize your market, the reason, the market, the By the way, you want to do it. No, you're not waiting. Second, you know, Omar, the card is much too small. Jewish. 
for this great thing <coughs> that I'm alive and what to eat and the, and, the, and the truth is I want to tell you all we are living a comfortable life no one lived so comfortable besides Uda Marish before he was chased out of Gennady but once he was chased out of the Garden of Eden he had a hard night we are blessed beyond our imagination with all our catching None of them had a, you know, the British didn't have iPods. And they take pictures and couldn't take the, didn't have, we are blessed, which beyond, beyond what could imagine. We catch, you know, about the food is not being fresh. You know, my mother says, I don't have to be wealthy and hungry. But there were people that most people before the war didn't know what to eat. We are how much food we throw out every, you know, after show. We are so blessed. It is no one ever would have dreamt that a life could be so blessed. <coughs> Gosh, me, it's not blessed spiritually, not blessed emotionally. And I, you know, and I always say, even people have emotional problems, it's a luxury to have emotional problems. You know why it's a luxury? When you don't have what to eat, you have no time to fetch. You have no time to say, you know, I got to speak to a therapist and try and fetch. You're just running to get your food. There's no time. We are blessed that we have time, we are living in a time which is it's unbelievable. And this is what we have to appreciate. That's why a person has to be happy. Happiness has nothing to do how much money in the bank, nothing to do with happiness is in yourself. If you're happy, this you must take it this until you have this is another great great thing that I taught us. <coughs> third thing, I mean there's many things but I just want to emphasize the third thing he said, which he taught us Right before he died, there's a famous sikha that he said, to the lesson that he said, never give up. Never. Uh, and the truth is, we are, as, as a child of a Holocaust survivors, the only reason why Yiddishkeit is still standing so strong is my parents who survived the Holocaust didn't give up. They were Hungarians, they were not Hasid them at all. It's part of the Jewish blood that throws through the veins that we don't give up. It's just like we don't give up and rebuild after such a disaster. Every person should never give up. Never give up what you want to strive for. Never give up. But you see, the life has ups and downs. That's, you know, I tell this to young people. How does the doctor know when a person is in intensive care that the person is still alive with all the machines put up? You see the line going up and down, you know he's alive. If the line is flat, it's over. As long as you have ups and downs in life, you're alive. Sometimes you want to be good, sometimes you're in a better mood, sometimes that's just what life it is. Often what we do is when we're down, we get depressed and we say, ah, forget today or forget tomorrow. You never, that's what he says, never, ever give up. If a person never gives up, you will be able to, you know, stand fast and do the right thing. It's not so easy not to give up, you know, because of levels. But this is one of his great things that no matter what a person did and how much he sinned, this is a you know, famous saying that he said, if you believe you could destroy, believe that you could be massacred, and you could fix, you know, and there's nothing in the world that the person can, you know, cannot fix with the koyach, and especially what Anachim said, is the koyach of the toyota. The toyota is so powerful. It is so incredible powerful no matter what, when, and where a person is addicted to who knows what, learning to will take him out of the show tachtis, of the depths of the dirt, and bring him back. So, I want to thank Rabbi Batesh, you know what I mean, at uh, organizing this. So I want to leave you that three things. How every, every day, you know, when you start stretching, ask yourself, did I, did, what did I thank Hashem? And if you go home, you criticize your wife, ask her, okay, i got to match it. Let me compliment her what I criticize. Sh- try to learn how to be more positive. Try to see the thing in light the positive things. Because clenching, everyone can do. Criticizing, everyone. This is, you don't have to teach anyone. To be positive and to, be, to see the good, one of the, one of the famous teachings of Muhammad Zahmar al-Kai was to see the goods about other people. Even on yourself, he said. The focus, not on the, the, on the negative, focus on the positive. Because if you focus on the positive, you will bring yourself to the higher level. So Hashem should help us. Amen. That, you know, you know that, that he's 
says his five will burn to Mashiach. I hope, I always say this to Shul all the time, I hope that I don't give up, as I said, that this Pesach Mashiach will see together all of us in Yerushalayim and the current Pesach.